the day I decided to start working on this project about Bazaar at Tehran, I was very excited. I'd heard a lot about it, and when my uncle got me the permit to film there, I was pretty happy. You can see him there now. He's sitting in the passenger seat, chatting to the taxi driver. Welcome to the Grand Tehran Bazaar. Here you can find a world of historical beauty. Each one of its long corridors selling goods from the ancient rug sellers to the modern day fake designer labels. When I went, the heat was near intolerable for someone who's used to the climates of England, as it always is in the 40 degree summers of Iran. The sun bore through my headscarf and burned through my jeans. But it was easy to forget about all that when there was just so much to see. Every inch and corner of this grand market, including the hustle and bustle of the hundreds and hundreds of people who walk around you and into you if you're not careful, throw you into a different cultural world. One of my favourite parts of the bazaar were these carts, taking merchandise from one end of the market to the other, delivering goods and not afraid to run you over if you're in their way. This is a Hamwal's basket, and this is a Hamwal, another way of transporting smaller merchandise from one end of the market to another. Now this, this section was special. As much as the sound of the whirring of the drill that he's using bore into my head while I was editing, it was still pretty cool to see my name being etched into a stamp. Yep, that's what's going on there. My name is being etched in Iranian with the date that we visited the bazaar into a stamp that I can use whenever I want to sign anything I want. Next up we have the rug sellers. The rug trade is one of the oldest of the bazaar and probably its most wealthy. The traders here seem to have more standing in the bazaar and their trade adorns many corridors with beautiful handmade designs waiting to furnish someone's rooms. The rugs are very well taken care of, regularly cleaned, regularly fixed, regularly repaired, all to make sure they're to a potential buyer's full satisfaction. Everyone in the market who we spoke to was very friendly, whether they wanted to tell us old stories of their time in the market or whether they were just giving us directions towards people who could tell us stories. The ones who were most willing to be on camera were the rug sellers. So we took advantage of that and asked them a little bit about the history of the bazaar. به <laughs> بازار فرش فروش ها نیست چون دیگه اونا رفتن و شغلشون کم کم عوض شد اومدن یه قسمت فرش فروش ها گرفتن که الان رسیده به سگک فروش و پارچه فروش now, here we have a trader who has been in the rug trade for a long time, and his thick hair money accent was quite lovely to listen to. <laughs> آجا یه سوال چه شغلایی تو بازار بود که الان دیگه نیست؟ الان کلی یه بیشتر تهران که الان خندشو میگیرن مردم سربسیشو میذارن چراغ حلوی سازا بودن چراغ ها رو میساختن اصلا تهران شغلشو این بودن الان بشو بگوشو برد بر میخوره بهشون 
میگن ما چرا فرش کاشون همه خیلی معروف تر از بقیه جاست ها؟ بیلا فرش کاشون به نظر ما نه که به کاشون از همه بهتر و اقتصادی تر اصفهانی ها دیگه مردم اقتصاد تری از اصفهان ما نداریم میان کاشون فرش کاشون به زیر پاشو بخرن یک نفر آدم اومده پنجم میلیارد داده که این فرش ها رو بسه هره و حضرت امام حسین و حضرت عباس اینا دارن بیبافر بشیدش هم بردن پنگ کردن بودا الان هم دارن باز هم مشغول است پنجم میلیارد پول داده است یه نفر حالا کی همه نمید یه هم کاشون آره خیلی من هم محبت کنم خیلی استفاده کنم چای داری قربون چای اون هزه ممنونه Despite being at the bazaar for two consecutive days, I don't think I even discovered a corner of it. We're talking about 10 square kilometers with mosques and food stores and more. Give me a week there and I still don't think I'll be able to navigate. It's well worth getting lost in there.